With me on Skype today from Orion Minerals, I'm joined by Errol Smart. Errol, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Very well, thanks, Errol. A significant announcement here today, this restructure to the company's Black Economic Empowerment Equity participation. Slightly complex to some degree. Talk us through some of these changes. Yeah, Andrew, this is a deal that's taken more than six months in the brewing. Uh, you can appreciate it in, involved eight different parties having to sign different agreements and they not working together and it's a bit like herding chickens, but we managed to pull it together with a great success for the, for the company. And in a lot of ways, we've broken the myths and, you know, South Africa trades under a lot of myths and more and more we're starting to demonstrate that they are just myths and that there is actual real value available here in South Africa. So what we've managed to achieve is we inherited an existing black economic empowerment structure when we acquired these assets in South Africa. Now, those black economic empowerment partners, that's something that's forced on you by mining law in South Africa. You have to have black partners and there's prescriptions about where their heritage is from and the number of females and all sorts of things. So it is a, a business challenge that has to be overcome. But it is only just another business challenge and it can be overcome and overcome with value. Now, the partners that we inherited at the time were absolutely suitable for an exploration company doing drilling and exploration and feasibility studies. But now, within a matter of weeks, we expect to have a bankable feasibility study complete. And in December, we published a scoping study that showed that we must expect to have to raise 300 million Australian dollars to build this mine. And yes, we will get about two thirds of that in debt. But a third of it is going to have to come from equity and equity equivalents. And our black partners either have to finance that or we're going to have to find financing for them. Now, one of the challenges of the black economic empowerment is it creates a disparity in the way that the law is structured. These guys are locked in at asset level. They can't sell their shares. So essentially, they become B-class shareholders. And it's very difficult for them to raise capital in the open market for their participation because they can't actually use their equity as value. So we've been thinking hard about how would we break this whole cycle. And we came up with an idea that has really worked out extremely well for us. And the net result is now our original founding black partners have been awarded, rewarded with shares in Orion and they've got a listed equity in their hands now. Some of them, after 10 years involved in this project, have finally got a listed equity instrument in their hands. So they remain good, solid Orion shareholders and they get exposed to the upside. We brought in new black empowerment shareholders. And through a hard search and a lot of work, we've been fortunate, but we have found absolutely the perfect partnership. We've got a group that are majority female, a group where most of them were born and bred in our local town of Prisca, but they are bankers, lawyers, um, mining engineers, um, accountants, and successful business people that have got financial capacity and they can bring financial capacity to the table. So this is a perfect solution for us. Now we have a situation that all of our black partners are invested at the same level and at the same um, risk and reward as our international investors and they've got exposure and they've bought in at a premium to market. We did this transaction at 29% premium to market. When we set out to do this, when we went into trading last week, everybody said, you're out of your mind. You can't raise money at a premium to market. We said, yes, we can, because the people that we are bringing to the table are going to unlock that kind of value and they're backing themselves. They're taking the shares in this transaction they're taking the seed. And then we went back to our, our main shareholders, Tembo and others. And they said, Errol, if you can pull this off and you can bring this quality of people. And lest we forget, Black Star is a group that have a very large mining engineering business with steel fabrication, construction and, and um, civil engineering capability. We are about to go into development. And these guys have got a big engineering business that builds mining plants and, and mining infrastructure and sink shafts and does all sorts of things. And these are our business partners and they're financing their way. 
What a fantastic message for the market. This is the right way to go. And I think it achieves everybody's objectives. For the first time, you've got everybody aligned with risk exposure in the listed company. We have got our compliance. We agreed with the new guys that if they came in, although we have another five years to achieve full compliance with what's called Mining Charter 3 in South Africa, we'll accelerate it. We'll bring in our community now so that every member of the community actually benefits. They become part of the 5% shareholding in the business through a community trust. All of our employees will be part of an employee's trust that will own 5% of the business. And between our new black partners and ourselves, we will carry them and get them there. It will be on a loan basis. But we will recover that money from the business in the long term. So there's no free carries. Everybody's paying their way. And we've got guys that are actively adding value. They bring in money to the table. They bring in financing capability to the table. And they bring in technical capability to the table. And then the last part of the deal and what we announced today was really the appointment of two real top class uh, directors. So Godfrey Gonway, when I joined Clough in the late 1980s, he was an absolute legend. This was the guy that had been the chairman of one of the first Western companies, Clough, that had invested into Africa as a junior miner. They introduced heat bleaching for gold mining into Africa. It changed the entire history of gold mining in Africa. Um, Clough had also developed the first mechanized underground gold mine in Zimbabwe, a large 200,000 ton a month underground gold mining operation. And Godfrey had been the chairman of all of this. After Anglo Gold Ashanti bought out Clough, um, Godfrey had ended up at Anglo American. And as a, a director of Anglo American South Africa, and in fact, chief operating officer until 2012, and he was CEO of Anglo's coal business, and as a result, ran their manganese business as well. So he is a very, very experienced South African mining um, entrepreneur and businessman. He uh, has left Anglo-American and is running a number of his own businesses. But he recognized in us exactly what he had seen in Clough in the past. This is a huge growth opportunity that's leading technology. There's a very active, um, energetic team that are driving it. And he basically fell in love with the project on that basis. Tom Borman, very, very seasoned mining um, executive, um, was CFO of BHP Billiton. So somebody with that kind of cred credentials. And incidentally, he worked alongside uh, Godfrey when Anglo and BHP had joint ventures on manganese operations in the Northern Cape. The two of them had worked together at the time, although they didn't know that we were speaking to them individually. And, and Tom has built big coal mining businesses in South Africa very successfully. Um, so, you know, we've now got this fantastic mix of the old salts that have got a lot of respect and a lot of knowledge to share with us. We've got a young executive team that are driving this hard. And we've got the new whiskey to South African mining, Billy Mawasha, I tease him. But, you know, Billy was... Um, the managing director of Rio Tinto's uh, Richard Bay Minerals here in South Africa. He was country, but the country manager of uh, Rio Tinto in South Africa until six months ago. But Billy and I had got to know each other at the Minerals Council. We were where we both on the board of the Minerals Council, and we had a meeting of minds. He was a guy that approached things the way that I did, thought the way that I did, and wanted to embrace the whole fourth industrial revolution and build new high-tech modern mining operations in South Africa. So the combination of the likes of Billy, the Old Salts, the Godfreys and the Toms and Black Soul that have got their whole, whole active mining engineering business and the access that all of those guys bring to finance in South Africa and internationally, it's a perfect storm. A perfect storm. Errol, good to speak. Look, thanks very much indeed for your time. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.